And I also wanted to let you know that if you have any questions for Oscar or Fabian or any of our speakers, please type them in the chat. Okay, now we can start. All right, let's roll. That was the first time we all saw it. So that wow. Thank you, Mel. That was awesome. great. That was tight. That was yeah. dope. I like that. As a copy. Yeah. Thanks, that was guys. <laughs> yeah. And Mel pulled all that off the internet as she told you. She's been stalking you guys for the past month for two months. So good yeah. job, Mel. Thank you. Well, Thank you. Uh, all right. Um so basically what we wanted to also say in the introductions is how Oscar and I met and how we all ended up being here this evening. So one of uh, another student who's not here, he actually sent me Oscar going down P3. So those of you that have been on campus at SMC, you know where P3 is, right? Um, and you know the steepness of those steps. So he sent me the, the picture and then I DM'd Oscar and sort of, you know, I just asked, I said, what was that like? I worked at SMC. And then we've been talking, right, Oscar, for about three months, four months. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. yeah. And thank you so much for even, you know, submitting for this, uh, you know, this opportunity and stuff. It's, it all came from you, like, being stoked, uh, you know, uh, from me doing that trick uh, to here we are now. So thank you. Oh, yeah. No, our pleasure. So we have a lot of uh, skaters in Santa Monica and 
you know, it was meant to be. So it, it definitely was crazy. And as uh, I saw Marilyn on the call, I don't know if Kirsten's here, but we were submitting. So literally you guys, we, the day that it was due, um, Oscar's training down in Mexico city, I'm hmm. DMing him literally, what's your address? What about this? What, what, what's your phone number? What's that? And I mean, we, we pulled it off somehow, some way. So my boss is on the call too. Yeah. I was probably supposed to be working at for the career services center, but I was submitting Oscar in for this. So, and then Oscar, you want to say how, and then Fabian, tell us how Fabian got involved in this. Okay. So I've known Fabian for a long time. I mean, the first time we went out to skate, it was, uh, I mean, right after he had just done, uh, I mean, to just get it straight into, he had just done seven years in, in prison and, and uh, my friend Danny Minnick, you know, he was like, hey, you gotta, you know, you gotta go skate with this, you know, with this guy or whatever. We just like set it, you know, just like a normal session. And uh, we just got along right away that he was like, oh, like they're they're giving you stuff at Girl Skateboards. Like this, this uh, he was like hooking me up. He was like, man, let's go to, let's go to the warehouse right now. And like, you know, I'm gonna go talk to Rick Howard. I'm gonna make sure that, you know, they're gonna take good care of you. I was like, yeah, I just met you like, you know, like an hour ago. I was like, yeah, that's so sick. You know, it was just like, like that yeah. energy of just like wanting to help someone out, especially like another, you know, Latino skater from LA. Um, so, yeah, you, you know, know, we you know there's a lot of haters. We got a lot of oh. haters. You know, <laughs> does something yeah, lot, we appreciate LA, you know? yeah, yeah, we appreciate so, it. You know, right, right away, like, you know, that, at that, you know, at that time I saw how, how giving he was and he, he would always say me like, hey, I got this, uh, you know, this event for the Boys and Girls Club, like, you want to come talk to, the, you know, to the students, and I was like, dude, I'm all about that, you know, because, like, I grew up in, in the hood, too, you know, so, I, like, I used to go to an after-school program, and, like, I remember, uh, you know, it really helped me out a lot, so anything that he, you know, anything he brought up to the table, I was always super down, and then, uh, um, you know, things happen and whatnot, and then, uh, you know, unfortunately, he, he went back to, to prison for, for some time, and and while he was in there, we still kept in contact, you know, um, I would talk to his sister and make sure, you know, how he was doing and things like that. And, and anyways, fast forward while me and Jenna were, you know, planning this, this, uh, this event, it was like, right, right before he was about to come out. And when he came out, you know, he called me literally, I think that same day or the next day, and we we're like, you know, got to talking and, and I told him, dude, if anyone should share like some inspirational story about LA is like it's you, you know, like dude, you're fucking you're like an LA native, like OG that that uh you know has gone through you know through so much and and Definitely. has came up through uh you know the other side of the of the tunnel and uh you know with such a good heart and just like with so much light to to want to keep you know creating and uh and that's how I, I instantly told Jenna like hey. I send her like a whole bio and I was like links of everything. I was like, Hey, this is my friend, David. We have to have him on the, on the call. Like, you know, his, his, if we want to inspire anyone, you know, it's gotta, it's gotta be through him. Like if, you know, I, uh, it'd be, you know, it'd be a pleasure for people to hear his story and things like that. And she just hopped, you know, she made it happen within a couple of days and got you approved and stuff like that. And I was like super stoked. And, uh, yeah, that's how that, that came about. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you, Jenna. Yeah, thank you, Jenna's Austin. Yeah. yeah, my internet connection is unstable. Look out! All right, it's all the energy in here. Um, yeah. All right, so uh, well, thank you, Oscar. Yeah, no, it was it was all very um, you know serendipitous, and it was meant to be. So we're glad to have both of you guys here. Um, Fabian's in Los Angeles, and Oscar's down in Mexico City. Just which I'll talk about in a minute. All right, so we thought we would start with uh, technical skating. Um, so Kevin, do you have a question for Oscar about that P3 trick? Yeah, definitely. I mean, anybody that skates and, you know, goes to SMC will like think about, oh, what is, what's been skated here? You know, any school you go to, you're like, what's been skated here? What's been skated here? And the, I think the biggest one, I'm like, oh, somebody skated this. I could tell somebody 50 did or did something on it. I was like, no way. <laughs> and then I remember seeing the clip uh in your in your part and i'm just like my goodness and nobody's stepped to it since and uh i was kind of just wondering like your process behind it because like i know each trick has its unique story behind it so i was kind of curious to like how that one came about because it's insane so cool so um yeah i mean that was that was a journey man it was like i think in my head for like three years 
Oh my um, gosh, wow. he is, I did some girl that went there. Like I didn't, I didn't, you know. Unfortunately, I didn't go to college, and yeah, yeah. one too young, you know. <laughs> yeah. uh, but I used to, I used to walk her to to class all the time. Like I spent so much time there at, at the <laughs> college. I would see, like I would walk by it every single, you know, every other day or what or yeah. whatnot. And I was, man, this thing is so possible. Like, and if someone's got to do it, it's got to be me. Like, yeah, I'm, like yeah. I'm every day, like I literally like you know, just stare at it for, for, you know, minutes at a time. And just uh -huh. like, you know, one day I'm going to do this. And it's just, yeah. you know how it is like you, it's, uh, especially when it, when it comes to big tricks like that, or, you know, like, it, you know, when, once it goes like 15 stairs and above, you really yeah. have to sure that, uh, that, uh, that you're capable of doing it, especially there because you could actually fall over to the other I side. Know. If you know, yeah. Right? So there's no safety net there. Yeah. Either and once right. you fall, if, you, if you fall on the other side, it lights out. It's over. That's yeah. it. Like, yeah. yeah. So anyways, I had to get, you know, get myself. I was like, I know I could do it. Not right now. Like, I don't think I'm there yet. Right, but right, this right. Is on the list, you know. So, you know, I just like, you know, it was always in the back of my mind, but I just was waiting for the right project too because that's with skating. You got to, or I think with anything, and, and, and one of the points I wanted to, to share with the students is, uh, like knowing when when to you know to step up and and make something happen you know not just get carried away and try to do something so gnarly in whatever field you're in just to do it and maybe not doing it right and uh just picking and choosing uh when you know picking and choosing your battles and when to produce the work you right. know um and it was one of the things like i you know ty evans uh, we were going out skating and filming for the movie We Are Blood, mm -hmm. and I was like, "Man, this is if there's any other project like if this, if there could be a perfect project. This is it, you yeah. know? Like this is be a, a, on a movie. He's got like he's filming with these humongous cameras that I've never ever been shot with, you know? Like mm -hmm. phantoms, you know, shot overs and and whatnot. So I and the the cool thing about him, he he's a skater, so he understands the skate process. So Right. Yeah, you know, I was like, "Hey, I think I could do this thing." You know, like, "You should we go try?" He's, he's all every time he he never would say no, no matter how yeah, crazy. Yeah. He was like, "Let's go!" All right, we'll set it up. And then I once I once I knew that he he was already setting up the whole crew, like you know, twenty people, and you're I was like, like, "I oh, gotta do it. I have to do it now." You know, and there's yeah, there's yeah. A before that I would go to a to a gnarly spot and. Mm -hmm. uh, I would I wouldn't feel it and I'd be like damn Ty sorry I got I set up everyone but you yeah. know I'm, I feel it today you know but then he knew yeah. I would call him two days later I'd be like hey today's the day dude I'm sorry like, let's go if you don't yeah, if you yeah. don't come on film it, I'm gonna get someone else to film it like let's go. yeah yeah you know so he knew how I worked but anyway so that day we go there and it was I think I don't even think it was a weekend I think there was like school going on like oh, I, remember, I remember him telling me like hey don't warm up inside the school. You're going to warm up uh, two blocks away. You're going to be by the car. We're going to take all these yeah. big cameras, there, you know, so they're going over there. They set up. And, uh, you know, it, 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 I was like, you know, stressing because you, you don't, you know, it's like, it's like uh, acting pretty much like, hey, action right here, right now. You have to do yeah. it, you know. Yeah. I was like, I hear, the, I'm gonna hear this call, and I gotta be warmed up, ready. So I'm over there doing all these tricks, stretching, like oh trying God. to make myself up to, you know, to yeah. get high to do it. And uh, I, when I got there, the spot was already bondoed, so there's. I was crack gonna say there. somebody bondoed it for sure. I, I bondoed like, it. I told him I was like, hey, I want that fixed. So yeah. he, it was pretty all fixed, and then there would be a the, like cop or security there at the, at the campus, and we yeah. would all duck, and we're like, hey, wait, wait. Just go, you know, like hi. Oh, yeah. You see him go, and like he was like, and he was stressed me out. He'd be like, "Dude, come, all right, man, you got a couple of tries." And yeah. I was like, I went up to it maybe like two, three times. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you guys, if anyone's like gone there, it's like the the ledge. It's not one complete sheet like a piece of metal. It's yeah, two. It's two. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, the one at the bottom was lifted, so it was like. It, you know, it was like kind of like this. So yeah. I knew that I was going to hit, I was going to get stuck. So I fixed it. I, I saw it and I was like, dude, there's no way I'm going to do it with that. So I pulled it and like, I just, I, I somehow made a snap on it so that it's the other way so that oh. I, I don't get stuck. And I was like, all right, now I have no excuses because I was looking yeah. for an excuse. 
you know, when something's so scary, sometimes you like you you're you're hoping for a cop to come like, hey, sorry guys, it's not my yeah, fault. You know, cops kicked us out. But this time it was like everything was kind of you know lining up and it was perfect. So I was like, you know what? Like, and I one of the thoughts that that came to my mind was uh, I thought about my grandfather for some reason, and I, I don't really think about him so much when I'm skating like that. But mm-hmm. this time he came to my mind and he it, it was like him telling me like, if you don't even if you don't even try you're not going to, you're not going to know if you could do it or not, you know? And that's another tip that I wanted to tell the students and and people, the viewers is like, don't be scared to try. And, you know, don't, don't be scared to fail. Like, but try, you know, because you're not going to know until you try, you know? So it was like, it was just that, like that thought came to my mind and I was like, you know what? Fuck it. You know, (laughs) I'm just going to try. I almost did a first try. I like, I grinded all the way down, but it it was like, Closer. It was like such a fast grind that that I just like I freaked out at the end that I was like oh, so yeah, close. Yeah, yeah. I just like I didn't even think about it twice anymore. I just I saw that I could do it already. Like I felt like I had already done it, you know. But I just didn't roll away. I didn't. I was scared to land on my board, so I just I didn't even say anything else to anyone else. Like I just grabbed my board. I ran up, and I didn't even uh I didn't you know I didn't do another test or anything. I just grabbed my board. I already knew like that I could do it because I had already felt it, you know, I already almost right, did right, it. So right. I could sometimes I, the way that I skate is like if once it clicks in your brain, just get the job done. Right. Uh, and and that's it, you know, and then think about mm-hmm. it later. <laughs> and that's, Man, another, that's so crazy. That- yeah, another point that I wanted to say is like with you know if you have a project that you want to do and you uh you know, that, that you're thinking about doing or whatever. It's just like, get the job done, bring, get it out. And, you know, like bring, bring to life what you're visualizing. And uh, you never know what that trick or what that project is going to lead to in the future. Mm -hmm. You know? So anyways, that's the sentiment. That's the, the, the trick story of that. that Yeah. And then I think I got really, really drunk after that for like a week. (laughs) I bet. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. I bet. Hey, can I just say something? Man, Oscar, you're going to have all the faculty looking at you differently now. Like, man, that's the dude that came over here skating on our school. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they're going to be like, dude, him out of our college. But you could say you went to college, though. You made history at that college. I, you could no, you went to it was a shirt. Shirt. There was a shirt hey. that I owned one time as a kid that said, I only go to school for the handrails. <laughs> yeah. Well, you studied, hey, you majored, you majored in handrails and stairs, you know what right, I'm saying? Exactly. And, you know, as a skater, like, this is an honor to me, you know, like, it means so much that, that the college and, and oh, the faculty definitely. would even consider doing this because, like, we're always being kicked out and we're always, like, looked at as, as like, you know, especially in, in the early 2000s as criminals, you know, like, as, mm-hmm. as like, kid that's, that has nothing going or whatever. So just even this opportunity to be able to, like, share our story and like you know um it's it's an honor and thank you guys for for allowing this that's right hey we're not criminals not no more <laughs> talk to our campus police ladies uh, i know i we have a lot of smc faculty on here you know um all right so oscar if you we're going to kind of keep going with you for for a minute um mm-hmm. can you tell us how you found skateboarding as your passion and also um, kind of a little bit about your story of growing up in Los Angeles as a street skater. And um, we have, I think you've, we've got about like 10 minutes. So, so uh, I'll, I'll keep it short. It's keep it short. Well, when I was, when I was younger, maybe, uh, you know, from like seven to 10 years old, me and my older brother, we, uh, his name's Sergio Meza. We, we really didn't see eye to eye, you know, he was a little older he, and, uh, you know, he, we were just we were really bad brothers to each other and like wouldn't get along and things like that <laughs> and uh you know you always as a as a younger brother you always want like your older brother's respect or be cool enough to like go hang out with your you know his your older brother and his friends you know so uh for right before my birthday he was like you know you know what? i'm gonna i'm gonna teach you about skating because he used to skate like he was already a skater but he uh he was going down a hill on down pico and he broke his arm in, in three different spots, like all at once. So like after that, he was like a little bit hesitant about doing tricks. So he just, he, you know, he introduced me to skateboarding and um, pretty much he, he, he would get excited to, to see 
the tricks being done through me, you know, like, mm. like, and I wanted to make my brother proud, you know, so he would, you know, he saw that I was getting into it and he'd be like, Hey, jump off these seven stairs right here. And I'd be like, all right, let, you think I could do it? Let's go. Like, you know, I was like, yeah. I was like, you know, anything, anything that he thought I, that was possible, like I would do it. And I early, like really fast, like, you know, from, from 10, when I started at 10 years old, by the time I was like 12, I was already jumping off like seven stairs, like mm. going down hills, you know, I would already come home. Like, you know, one time I remember going down this hill and I, like I got stuck and I came home with like a, my face all scraped up and he was like, don't tell mom that you're with me. All right. Cause she's not going to let you come on and skate with us anymore. So, you uh-huh. know, uh, I, uh, you get jumped, huh? for all those, you know, and it's like what bonded us, you know, <laughs> after that, it was like, it's, it, uh, um, that's a, that's how I got introduced to skateboarding. Yeah, he would he would he would teach he would like show me videos. I remember the first video he showed me was Ronnie Mullen versus Day One Song, and I was just like, I didn't I didn't know that you could actually flip your board and do you know I was just like blown away. Um, and you know living in a, in like a broken home like it it became it became like uh, your escape you know so I I would catch myself just like roaming out of the house and going skating by myself behind this supermarket you know and just like for hours at a time it was just like you know i had so much things going on in my head and uh don't want to get too deep into like my early early childhood but you know i had a really really rough time and uh it was like my way to just like to escape it because when you whenever you do something that's this dangerous you have to be a hundred percent on your board you know you can't like you can't be 80 percent there and then like 20 percent at home arguing with your brother you know it's like you're just you know uh, you know you have to be fully focused so that you know so you don't fall so it was like it was my way to just escape from reality and just uh and just skate it's you know i just skate for hours it's crazy before like and it wasn't you know uh and one of the one, one of the uh advices that i want to give to kids out there too is just uh or you know just whoever's watching in general it's like uh, fall in love with what you do, you know, like fall in love with it, you know, to the point where it's like, it, you know, it, it makes you feel good, you know, by your day or, you know, that's just like, that's all you think about. It's like, uh, you Make know, it your uh, girlfriend. yeah, it's like just dive into your passion, you know, because like I, at, at that age, um, uh, hold on, let me turn this light on. Right Pay your bill, Oscar. <laughs> <laughs> No, I got my, I have, cause I, I'm shooting, I'm starting to shoot photos. So I have this, like, I just bought this, this, uh, flash called AD 600, but it also works as a light too. It's, it's really good. But, uh, mm-hmm. anyway, it doesn't stay on for that long, but, um, yeah, what was I saying? So really, I didn't know, I didn't know anything about sponsorships or a profession. Like it was just like throughout from 10 to 15 years old, it was just like, just i couldn't see myself doing anything else you know but skating like i just really fell in love my my mom was a single mother with four kids four boys at that you know like we drove her crazy we tried to kill each other like all times it's like she mm-hmm. wouldn't she didn't have the money to like Mexican family yeah. you know like she just brought me that one board and then from there it was like i needed to find a way to to uh to be able to to feed that addiction, you know? So I figured ways out to like get boards. Like I would play people skate for boards. I'll see random kid coming down the street like, hey, you wanna play skate? Like, I'll, if you win, you take my whole board. If I win, I'll take <laughs> your trucks, you know? Like I was just yeah. hustling, like I had to figure out a way, you know? But yeah, like fall in love with what you do because like then no one else, you know, you're gonna, you're gonna do it no matter what. Obviously you're gonna do it so passionately that at some point all that effort and work is gonna show you know mm-hmm. but don't a lot of kids that i see these days like at the park or whatever they're just like their parents are already like nailing into their brain like this is going to be your profession you're going to go to the olympics you know like That's all this so stuff, like, we know, like we didn't know anything about that we just like skated because it's you know we just it felt good it was like being a rebel or something you know i don't know mm-hmm. um nice. but anyways that's how, I, that's how i got started and uh my little uh, advice of getting started with something new all right, actually, Fabian, I'm gonna hunt to you. So tell us how you got into skateboarding. Tell us how you discovered this uh, sport. How how I got into skateboarding? Yeah. How did you get into skateboarding? Well, <laughs> once upon a time, uh, 
Well, a long time ago. You got three minutes. Go. <laughs> three minutes. Damn, I gotta explain everything in three minutes. Okay. Damn, right. yo, we get yo. Hey, he's a he's a star of the show. You gotta give him. You can Hey, hey, yeah, this I is wanna, no time limit. This is. Now you feel pressure to give you all the highlights. And like, come on. All right, hold on. Jessica's keeping track of our time. So 10 minutes. Where are we? Hey, am I the only one that, that, that can't see Fabian though? Or is, is that my, my Mexican internet? I can, I can see him still. So. Dude, Mexico has barely getting, like, they're barely got Atari. You got, you have no internet right now. <laughs> hey. All right. So, all right, so listen. Okay, so how I got into skateboarding. Well, just like Oscar, I come from a crazy, broken family. Like, mom and dad, young, they were heavily into drugs and gangs. And, like, I was always, like, on the street hanging out, you know. And um, I was on a bike, actually, with my friend Juan, one of my good friends, Juan Harrell. We were on bikes, and um, we were actually sharing a bike that we both stole. And... Um, so he was on the on the on the handlebars and we heard all kinds of like noise going on we seen these kids making noise with the skateboards and we're like damn what's all that noise and they're just all in they were jumping around on a small jump ramp in the middle of the street and these two asian kids from like a block and a half away and we could hear it so we start biking over there long story short these kids go to school with us, but they were kind of afraid of us at the same time because, you know, they thought we were going to jack their boards, but we didn't. We were just interested in like what they, how they were making it pop. And it was an Ollie. They were making it, you know, just, they were just six skaters. They had on Jimmy Z's at the time. And like, it was like a, a thing, you know? So they told us that, you know, these skateboards cost a lot of money. We didn't have any money. So what we had to do, and I know it sounds pretty messed up, but we had to go and like steal skateboards. And we did. We went, we went out to like your area, Jenna. We went out there. We went out there to your area, girl. We would have got you with a skateboard. No, I'm so so we went out there and we we were like what, little, what, you know. What, what year was this? Sorry, Petro. This what is, year? This is like this is this is 1985, 84. The Olympics. The Summer Olympics of 84, 85, and, and like skateboards were like a whole nother breed back then. They had zero nose, kick tails like a fin, and so they had rails and guard tail, tail guards and all kinds of stuff. So me and my friend jumped in the back of a truck back when Nissan trucks was in. Remember all the Nissan trucks? Well, we, we sat in the back of a truck because I lived in front of Tommy's on Beverly Boulevard, so that's where everybody used to hang out. And listen to all the like weekends are made for fun type of music, you know. So <laughs> we went out there to Glendale and we get in Eagle Rock and we came up on some skateboards and um we jacked them, we stole them, and we had no money. My mother, my mother couldn't afford to give buy me a skateboard. And at the time, my, my mother had a a, a a drug problem and and drinking, and it was all kind of my house. I had a party house. I grew up in a party house, and and so there was no like Really, there was not too much guidance or supervision there, but enough to keep me in line and, and, give, and give me what I needed. But, but for skateboarding, they weren't going to afford it. They, they weren't going to support it. So I had to go get it. And I did. And for shoes, when my shoes would mess up, because I was skating in my shoes, I got Ollie holes. Echo Park is right next to Chinatown. And Chinatown is right there on, 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 on Broadway. So we would go, you know, and then like, I love my Asian people, man. I love them, but they leave their shoes outside. So that's like telling me you're giving away your shoes. So here I come and I'm just creeping up. You know, I do a little frog man up to the shoes, up to the porch, and I size up my feet with my boy and we're put on, I leave my old dusty ones there and put on some Velcro shoes. They weren't even made for skateboarding, bro. They wasn't even made for skating. They were just like Velcro ASIC tigers or something, you know? And then here I am skating in some crazy shoes that make no sense for skateboarding at the time because there was only airwalks street vision streetwear and vans that was it there was nothing else so here i come with my crazy old tennis shoes from like an old man or something and i put those on and I skate so we were known as the la the wilshire boys because we skated up and down wilshire and all these guys that were better than us 
they started giving us skateboards like my friend Gabriel Rodriguez, rest in peace, and Paulo Diaz and and, and like um guys like guy like John Orleans and the, this dude named Sang and like all these kids that were bad, Gilbert Urbina. And and so me and my boy Juan and Joey, Joey Suriel, he ended up turning pro with me and and Billy Valdez and all of us that grew up right there. And my, my friend George Morales, we call them puppet. All these guys were good skaters, but some of, you know, there was about 30 or 40 of us, but everybody had their own lives to live. I had nothing. I'm going to be honest with you. I had nothing. I wasn't smart in school. I spent three years in the ninth grade. I, I, I got kicked out of school a lot for fighting. I got in trouble and um, skateboarding is all I had. Bottom line. Skateboarding is everything I had. So I used to sleep in my friend's attic. I used to sleep on the stairway of his apartment buildings. I, I was going from house to house to house and always had a skateboard. I was homeless. I never used drugs at this time. I didn't do no drugs, but I love skateboarding so much that I just felt like one day I'm going to turn pro. And, and to be honest with you, I would pray. I would pray to God that I would like add this to my prayer that I'm going to turn pro. Keep me safe and bless my family and everything and help me get by these little streets out here because it's crazy where I live. And, yeah. you know, being brought up in a family of a gang culture and drugs and you get everything that goes with it. You get the drive-bys, you get all the, all the fights and shootings and you got to watch where you walk and what, what you wear. So skateboarding was a different time. At those days, it was different. So coming up skateboarding, I used to get chased. It's not like today where you got... Rob Dyrdek on TV saying that it's good and all these X games, it was all bad. Skateboarding, you was a punk. You was a sissy if you skate. You was from the beach. So they didn't like us. So me, I, I, had, I, I don't like getting talked to that way. So I would fight back. And, and we would fight these fools and we would go at it. And like out of all my friends, there was like 20 or 30 of us. There's only like three of us fighting these dudes. So we would get whooped on. You know, a lot of skaters, they just ain't built that way. They're like, dude, I skate. No, no, man, not me. Shit, I'm, a, I'm fighting and I'm going to stay there and get my ass whipped. So um, skate, that's how I grew up in, the, in, the, in, the, in this part of town right here in L.A. And, and um, that's how I was built all the way growing up. So when I got sponsored, I got sponsored by these shops and everything. And then came the day, like, you know, I was pretty good in the area. I hung out with the best kids in the area. All those dudes that was giving me shit, they started accepting me and liking me and wanted to skate with me, even though they knew I was poor and ghetto. And they, I could spend the night at all my friends' houses, but they couldn't spend the night at mine because you know why? Because my parents, my family, it was like nothing but gangs and drugs being sold. And it was a bad environment. Just, you know, look, just, just look at the movie Training Day. It was like that house they went into. It was similar to that. It was like that on, on everything. It was like that, but in Echo Park. And that's and my family knows. Like they, I, I'm not gonna lie and try to make my family sound a certain way. That's just how we are, and and that's how it is. My family's clean now, and they've done good, and they've changed up. But it took a long time getting to this point. I've gone to skateboarding. And I've got to travel. I got to see different things. And it opened up my mind to like different people. I've always had a lot of good friends, good, solid friends that helped me get to the next level because you can never do it by yourself. And this is a good, important thing. Never burn bridges. Never burn your, your friends. And, you know, a lot of people are, are, they still like me and they still have love for me, even though I've done time in prison and the things that I've done and I've hurt people. And, and, I've, and I've hurt myself and I've hurt my family and I've done all kinds of stupid things in life, but I've, I've never hurt any of my friends and I never burnt my bridges in the skateboard world. The skateboard world I've left alone, I've always took it to the area that I was living in and it was all grimy and nobody skated there. And I knew who to like swerve from and bob and weave and dodge dodging people on the streets to bullets to, I was using drugs at one point I was using so many see because skateboarding back then skateboarding was like a, a it's a close tight-knit family right and and um there's no contracts and there's no like okay we all get together and train like a football team or a baseball team it's like you're on the street you're on the street and that's all you do you're you're on the, now we got these skate parks which is good for these kids and I and I and I love that but back then all we had was the streets, we meet up and we go hang out in the streets and people, securities will try to kick us out forcefully. And that's when we like, I don't like being touched. 
don't put your hands on me. So I would be like, back then I was a firecracker. I would be a nut, you know, like what? And I would get my skateboard and we'd, that's it, it's on. You know, we would just get these security <laughs> securities new not to touch us. That's why they skateboarding is not a crime. Well, I'm part of that. They, it, 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 no, it ain't a crime, but don't treat it like it is because I, because we, we fighting back. You know, there's a lot of kids that grew up in, in, in LA that, hey man, all over the world who skate. Nobody, you know, you're concentrating, you have your mind set on this trick. You're, 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 you're putting all your energy, sweat and so sweat, blood and tears. Look, I can show you right now. Look at my elbow. That's from skating. You see that? I'll you see that? That's, that's, a, that that's, a, that's a swell bow. That's a swell bow. And look, that don't come easy right there. Bam. And look, and I've been, <laughs> see, I, I'm still skating as old as I am. I'm still skating and don't ask me how, but I'm still skating. And, um, and so I'm, and one, one thing I wanted to say about, about Fabian is that Fabian is part of the, like the, the first 10 Latino skateboarders out of LA to like oh, yeah. really oh, yeah. go to New York and like, you know, go hang out. It's like, he was wearing Supreme stuff when Supreme was like a little skate shop that no one cared about. Like they just printed little shirts and like, you know, they were, you know, they're like, fuck five, $10 or something, you know, like, but yeah. he's part of the era of like, when skateboarding was so raw and real and like, you know, no teams, like, like, you know, no, no training for, for contests. Like you're trained at, you learn, you learn tricks like at your school, you know, at the spot, like you go to a spot and you learn the trick there. You don't learn it at the skate park, you know, um, which is, which is amazing. Cause that, you know, that doesn't exist anymore. And uh, mm. it's good to give praise to someone that's, you know, especially still out skating right now. He's just at the barracks, you know, like I said, it's getting, yeah. getting, Elbows in. He'll, yeah, he's, yeah. I'm, I'm still at the barracks. We're gonna get him on some on some yoga on some yoga classes so he can start uh, really getting it on. <laughs> so actually, both of you guys bring up a question in my mind: is how how did you both break through your barriers? Um, you know, around your family um, backgrounds, your culture, um, you know, expectations of of your um, of your cultures. I mean, any either one of you yeah. want to jump in and. How do you, how um, do you yeah. because so many of our students face like um, expectations that they're not quite sure they can do it. They're not sure they're deserving to be, um, you know. I can, I can speak on that because I had to be actually move away from home when, when I was like 18, 19, when, uh, you know, like I was getting sponsored already from like 15 to, to 18. And I, you know, I'm making a little bit of money and I'd go to auditions for commercials, things like that. But I wasn't like, fully you know having like getting paid like every month you know like a contract with insurance and things like that so it was like you know I, and and my mom you know she she needed help around the house so i you know there was a point where i would i would come home and sure. eat your your own family you know it'd be like hey so you know every single day like hey so what's going on man you still skating you know like it's i think it's time to get a job you know and i would always have to kind of tell them like dude like you know how close i am like i've got this project that is about to come on like obviously nobody else knew how in depth of the project like i wouldn't really get into it because they don't they didn't know the field you know like in my school it was like if you if it, when the teacher would ask you like what you want it to be when you grow up you, you don't tell them a pro skater They're like that doesn't exist you know it's like you know but i knew it existed because like at that time uh chad muska was like you know, uh, genuine enough to like be cool with us, you know, me and my homies. And he like, he would invite us over for dinner and stuff like that. And I was like, you know, uh, you know, a ghetto kid from South Central, but he, you know, we'd go to, to the Hollywood Hills to, to sit on his couch and like, he, you know, he had his, his truck and everything. I was like, damn, this is, this is for real. Like, this is a professional, like no one. So when I went back home and they would say that it didn't exist, I was like, you can't tell me it didn't exist. I, I my friends are, killing it it's got their own shoes they got you know like they're in magazines they're like what who's in magazines you know like whatever so you know i would come home and get so discouraged from like the the, the energy in my house where it was like dude you know so much pressure like dude you gotta yeah. stop that you're gonna quit and i was you know what man i packed all my shit because i knew i was so close i was like like two three weeks away from like sign, you know signing this contract and i was just like you know uh like i knew it was happening i just didn't i couldn't deal with coming home to uh to to that type of energy so one of the, well, the advices that i can give is just that be you know if if you really like focus on on your craft and yours you know obviously you have to be realistic with what with your what your goal is and and don't lie to yourself either 
but don't let other people's you know opinions or advice stop you from like reaching the the goal that you you personally think is possible you know because a lot of people will tell you something's not possible because they personally don't think it's possible you know it's like they if if you're trying to learn a new trick or something and it doesn't exist yet and you tell it someone about it they're like dude you're crazy that that's not possible but you know that could dive you towards another route of never even trying the trick so it's like um you know obviously be realistic with with uh what your goal is and don't let it affect like you know your living situation or something like you got to be realistic with what you could do you know and pull your strings and stuff but one of the things that i like is uh that personally being in, in the struggle like i thrive in str- while struggling you know like i i feel like it makes me creative in in my decision making and having to like figure it out you know figure out a way and i would you know there's always you know you can always figure it out i would always tell myself that but uh hey, hey oscar hey hey oscar check this out when i was younger my mother and father didn't even know that i was on magazines and skateboarding professionally they thought i was stealing all this stuff still and i was getting it free they're like what are you doing on that surfboard on that thing you do and like my uncles would be like hey you know they would make fun of me they would actually yeah. make fun of me they'd be like hey they, they, at first all the hard work it didn't pay off yet so when it started paying me they like they made fun of me and then later on they would start asking me for a dollar a couple of dollars and i got a few dollars to buy a beer you know what i mean it was all like it, it was little by little by little it was a process i remember telling my mom hey this is for i'm telling you the truth i went on tour the first tour i went on and my mom's like yeah right you're going down the street to juan's house i go man i'm packing a bag i'm gone i'm leaving and i i'm like i'm gone she goes ah you're going to be up the street she she had no clue no clue like and i came back and i'm like mom look i showed her a magazine i showed her a skateboard with my name on it and she's like really really so these are how did you do it? how do you get paid she had no like they never went to none of my shit they never went to a contest never went you know so for me it was like come home and hit reality like i would be like oh fabian this fabian that and this and that you're doing good no there was no internet back then and no phones no cell phones but it was no not even a pager man my pagers barely started coming in so they was like really like just pat on the backs and like hey you're doing good but when you come home hey go take out the trash where you been you know it was one of those like you get nothing back to reality it's it, and and it's you never, it, you never let it stop you though you know like that's what i'm no. saying like don't someone else is like reality or our opinion of like what you're doing like stop you from like you know waking up and like still chasing that that dream you know still like staying at it and i think i can speak for you too phase that like going you know having those issues at home or you know those types of situations like we left it all in the street you know like we slam and take slams and i feel like it made us feel alive and just like you know i love coming home like beat up like i just it would make me feel like i just like a my warrior knee. you know this Went is my home. knee too yeah <laughs> i know you got a bunch of these on you i got to be man i'm being i'm way more careful now like it's crazy <laughs> even like i pick and choose my battles wisely like, yeah. yeah i don't know i got i got to see it in writing <laughs> of what's yeah. going to you know why yeah. am i jump 20 stair thing again like <laughs> uh, where is this going <laughs> yeah how much am i getting <laughs> yeah. this is going to be no not you know i'm i'm married now so it's like i you know we decisions are not just made by me now you know it's like i got to think of uh, the household and you know things like that so it's it's which is good you know you get you get wiser that's good man um awesome. you know you shared with me uh getting back to the family uh something and it's okay if you don't that your royalty checks you would send where where would you send your royalty oh yeah yeah so you know so the one of the things i like to say is like it doesn't there's no better feeling than to like chase your dream you know and then it happening you know you being in the midst of like your dream then like everyone else that just told you you couldn't do it and just like you know you know obviously have like having nothing else to say than to be like damn like you know even they're getting inspired by you know and and it's one of the things that really even with my mother was like she she trusts in me in 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 my decision making now you know she's like i'm you know like i'm sorry i didn't you know see it the way or whatever but i know that you, you know you're going from you know you're coming from a good place and what you're doing and i trust you and now it's just like it may it was like 
becoming a man, you know, it was like, okay, like I got that approval now. It's like, she trusts it and knows that I, you know, I'm going to, you know, I obviously go through ups and downs, but you know, she, she, uh, she, um, uh, gives me a lot of, a lot of respect, you know? Um, and wait, what was your question? What, what did, did you want to touch on again? No, I, 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 I don't think you mind me, but that I guess you started, um, after you chose to go pro that, you actually had the right oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah okay so one of the one of the breakthroughs was uh so i did a, an apple commercial that went worldwide which i didn't know what i was even filming at the time because it was like i had signed this non-disclosure thing that just like they couldn't tell you know they wouldn't tell us what it was for or how big it was going to be and i really didn't even want to go to the audition i was like yeah like whatever i don't even know what it is but i ended up going and i got the job and um once I found out how much I was going to get paid, I was like, you know what? I'm going to send all my residual checks to my mom, you know, to her, to her place. So she, you know, she'd get, it was a time it was like, you know, she couldn't even open the mailbox, you know, just because it was, I was getting paid from all over the world when they played it. So uh, she, she would call me because she would open them and see how much money I was making. And she's just like, are you, are you doing uh, bank fraud? Are you, are you uh, printing these out? Like, you know, these are these real checks, you know, because it, it was, you know, I got paid really well. So, you know, that to me was like, it was so satisfying, you know, I'm not like, no, mom, those are all real checks, you know, I'm paying tax on that's, and that's actually after taxes, my, my, that's my money now, you know, like, I don't even have to pay taxes on that. So it was like, you know, all those, all those, those things were like, you know, it, it was, it's so satisfying, you know, and it's like, what makes, what, you know, encourages you more to keep going, you know, like, Take your winnings, but you know, treat every every project, you know, like it's your last, and uh, keep, you know, keep just firing them out. But yeah, I forgot I mentioned you that. <laughs> Not that maybe you would know that, because she yeah. would, it, I, yeah, she she really couldn't believe it, you know, it's tight. But I think it's also about showing family or people that, um, and and I know your mom's always been supportive, but it's like she, but also you had to kind of step away to get to the to the where you are, right? And both of you exactly, did. yeah. So it was good for her to realize, like, oh, like exactly. okay, he's 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 good, you know. And it was tight. And and one of the things that I love about my family is like, even when the money came, they they uh, they were never like, hey, you know, like feeling like they they deserved, I don't know what, you know, I'd always loved doing stuff for my family, you know, like it was never an issue for me, but it was never that feeling of like, oh, you're, you know, now you live in Brentwood and now you're like, you know, you don't come around or whatnot, you know, things like that. It was like, so, so they're like, I, you know, they had so much respect because, and, and uh, they knew how, how hard I worked for it, you know, so hard that they didn't even, you know, they, they, they couldn't see what I was actually doing, you know, and, and they, uh, you know, so I love that about my family, you know, that it was just always like, you know, that they let, she just let me do what I, what I had to do. And I, you know, I would always, yeah, I come around when I had to, or when I was in town, because I, at that time I was traveling a lot too, but I never forgot about my family and always, you know, you know, she'd always find cash uh, hiding in her purse and things like that. I love doing it like, you know, as a, as a son, you want to, you know, keep, keep your family happy and stuff. So, yeah. Yeah, that's true. All right. Um, I think we're going to have Kevin ask a question. So, and then we're going to move on to the art piece mm -hmm. of art. All right. There we go. Uh, yeah, no, totally. Uh, what you said about um, like coming home, like beat up and stuff af after a trick is like such a crazy feeling, such like a good feeling. You feel like, yeah, I really did what I was supposed to do for the day. So I, that just caught my, caught my attention. I'm like, oh yeah, definitely. I know that feeling like, putting in the work. Um, uh, the next question was just um, about the Olympics and what you think about skateboarding being in the Olympics. I'm sure you've got like a million questions. Everybody asking that like, oh, skateboarding shouldn't be in the Olympics and this and that. Uh, just kind of wanted to hear your take on it on like, do you think it should be in the Olympics or do you think that it should be kept to its roots? kind of how Fabian was saying, like skateboarding was, you know, a lot from its start was a little bit more raw, artistic. Like, what do you think about skateboarding being in the Olympics now? Cool. So with, with what you said about like the, you know, coming home and putting in the work, I thought about one thing that I want to share is just like for the viewers, like let the work speak for itself, you know, like let that be how people judge you, you know, like, 
so many people had, you know, growing up, like as a Latino or whatever, like it, they made it really hard for me to break through the industry. I'm not going to lie. The industry mm. made it really hard. That is like put in all the work and let the work just like overshine anything that anyone else has to say about you and just let that just like, here it is, you know, <laughs> judge that, you know. Um, and going to your question about the Olympics, um, I didn't, I mean, I grew up in the street too, back, you know, and I started skating in 2000. So there was not that many skate parks. There was a Culver City skate park that we went to that was metal back then. It was not even yeah. the, the country one, it was metal. So we would go there all the time. Like, my, you know, that was our park, but it was like <laughs> a piece of metal on the ground for a flat bar, like, you know, that would roll yeah. every time I grind it. And, um, you know, so I come from that era too of street skating. Like we skated uh, Matt Vernon and LA. My brother went to LA High School, so I come from you know obviously street skating. That's why I like to skate that. But I, uh, but with the with the Olympics, you know, it's a uh, it's an opportunity for for skating to just keep growing for people yeah. to keep doing you know keep skating for a living, which is I think it's fucking amazing Definitely. and unbelievable. But um, but. Also, don't dive just about contests, you know, dive in, you know, still, you got to keep your roots. If you take the roots out of the tree, the tree's going to die, you know? So you got to always like stay in the streets, you know, or give your respects to the streets. Like, right. you know, you can never knock, you know, say anything bad about where the, the birth of skateboarding came from, you know, like yeah. you always remember the, the OGs and, you know, who paved the way. Um, okay. And personally, like I didn't, I didn't have no, no, um, no idea or thought about being in the, the Mexican Olympic team or in the Olympic team to, to begin with. I, uh, from like 2015 to 2017, I, uh, I was in a very dark stage. I, you know, just running around LA and just like mm -hmm. not really skating anymore. I, I was like tired of like brands, you know, kind of controlling what I was doing. And, you That's know, funny. I don't know. I was like, I had to step back a little bit cause it was getting, it was not becoming fun anymore, you know? So I stepped back. And um, I wasn't skating. Um, I lost my brother, Victor Garibe, rest in peace. So that also died, you know, drove me into another, you know, zone and stuff like that. And it wasn't until um, I had to have some friends, like, you know, not to name drive or whatever, but I was hanging out with, with, with Danny Way at his house. And um, hold on. Keep the yeah, these commercials, coming back <laughs> for these commercials. So, <laughs> no, no. So anyways, like, you know, I was, I was hanging out with Danny a bunch and, you know, I, he had just introduced me, didn't know it was going to be my future, you know, my future wife at the time, but, you know, we're hanging out and, and they just kept, you know, one thing that Danny told me, you know, one that would always stick with me is like, dude, if, if I, if I had your knees or, you know, if I could still, you know, like take slams like that, like, what are you, you're wasting time, you know, like I'd be out there like, jump doing some crazy shit you know so oh, wow it took it took it took him to him and my my wife now dawn that uh like would plant that seed you know i was basically all messed up i wasn't even thinking about skating like i there was no thought of going out to skate and they were planning to like hey don't you like want to go out and skate like what do you you know the olympics are about to happen like don't you think that like you're mexican you speak spanish like you're you know you you have family there like don't you want to like like trying, I was like, damn, like, you know, they just planted that seed. And I was like, right. man, I mean, you're right. I mean, I have been healing up for two years. Like, yeah. I think, you know, I think I could still take some slams. Like, I don't know, you know, and it just took that idea to, you know, to us really just like pulling the trigger. And two months later, we we're on a plane and, you know, like not knowing, you know, how the process was going to be about getting into the content to being on the team. But we took that risk, you know, it's like, it's mm -hmm. another thing. It's like, take risks, you know, get out of your comfort zone. Don't, you know, uh, you're not going to know until you try, you know, right. you, you, sometimes you got to take the leap of faith. And this time it was, I, I took their advice and like, they believed in me for some reason, you know? And like, I, sometimes you got to have people like that around you to believe in you and, and uh, you know, find those people and keep those people close to you. Cause those are the ones that are going to maybe drive you back to your actual path that, you know, where you should be. And, mm -hmm. um, Long story short, you know, got here and then and, and skated the contest, their national contest, and and ended up in the top three spots. And I'm I'm happy to be in in the the Olympic team. You know, it's just another another uh, experience and get you know get to travel and skate contests and stuff like that. But 
it doesn't yeah. define you as a skateboarder you know it's not like i didn't grow up like hey i'm gonna be an olympic skater you right. know and like, yeah, yeah. Know, like i go i go train with like actual olympians from mexico like boxers and like right. soccer players like we're in the same gym and stuff and i'm just oh. like Damn, these dudes are real athletes you know like right. these dudes yeah definitely like, check their muscles like i'm just there i gotta like pull the weights down you know i'm like yeah. hey, i'll be able to the corner you know like i still don't consider like an athlete like that you know i'm not that uh -huh. like just into that i just I, you know it's just about skating and at the end of the day it's like you know just having fun and skating that's how you get better and better and and, and no, no matter how hard you can train like even at the gym or or taking advice from other like a coach or something like that the creative aspect of, of skating it's so important that like that make it, it makes you you know it's mm -hmm. picking and choosing your tools as a painter picking and choosing your lens as a photographer you know and then picking and choosing your tricks as a skateboarder you know yeah. it's like that all really ties into to your you know what feels good to you mm -hmm. and anyway that's my opinion about the olympus i think it's tight i'm all for it <laughs> Yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah let's hear from Fabian. I want to hear what Fabian thinks about, yeah, about this whole thing. Um, you we know that they try to, to bring the Olympic they try to bring skateboarding onto the Olympics a lot of times. You mm. know, even you know, even before my time. So it's uh I would love to hear what, what your thoughts are, Fabian. Well, I I think it's I think it's good. I think it's about time. I think it's uh oh long overdue, maybe. That's something that we dreamed about as a kid, like it would never happen, but you know, so many things like now, now with, with, with the way skateboarding is and the, the, the level of tricks that guys are doing today are so crazy. It's just like, I used to pretend, I used to pretend like when the fingerboards first came out, I would like, imagine we did this, just imagine, or like we'd sit down on the street and be like, imagine we did this down that rail. And it's like happening now, cabalario kick flips and like cabalario tail slide. Like it's yeah. crazy, like 270 Caballero backside tail slide. Like I seen it done on, on the barracks the other day. Right. I seen some dude just recently. I don't know who this kid was, but he did a 360 kick flip to backside Smith, and then he went on, and then another rail he kick flip backside nose blend slide came off forward. That was his line. That's like an imaginary. That's something I don't like. Even the. Even the crazy backside 50 50, well, that's, it's just nuts. Mm -hmm. Some of the things I've seen, like, like, it's just crazy, man. Like, that's how you say, Fabe, that it's like, it's like about time. But one of the things about, like, no, so, so it's, it's I think, I think it's ahead, like this. I, I think, I think it's like the times now, it's, it's, um, I think it's, a, it's, it's embraced. I think they should embrace it because, mm -hmm. you know, I think Fave in person, I think like people are starting to really dive into like the difficulty of how this, yeah. like how difficult skateboarding is that they're like, all right, I think it's time we give these people, this dude some respect and like, let's start paying them properly. You know, it's like, right. dude, like soccer players and like, dude, they're making bank. Like, they, you know, they can really su like support their families, you know, and like their children for, you know, a couple yeah. generations or whatever. Like you can really make good money. I feel like, it's gotten to the point where it's we need to showcase it uh, the, the, how difficult it is and how you're saying how involved the skate the tricks are to yeah. be able to like you know to make it a real profession like a real you know like you know enough money to to buy a place and re like ha retire you know not that there's probably like 10 like 10 20 pro skaters of all time that could, that could actually say that that made a good you know a good amount of money to be able to retire like chilling you know and i, I think yeah. it's it's that's gonna that has to change for sure well just that that just like you said you were at danny ways well he's one of the guys who actually started the mega ramp who who invented uh, the mega ramp so that it could be taken to that next level always uh, inspiring. Every, every time i think about like even just being able to sit in his couch and like you know i i, I sleep in his guest room next to his like his his uh skater of the year trophy one on each side because <laughs> he's the only one that has two you know yeah. i'm just like what am i doing i'm like i need to get my ass out in the streets you know like and, <laughs> yeah. and, and uh, you know we still talk all the time we like trip out on like you know and i always thank him you know because it's like who else to you know like thank god i had you know him giving me advice or you know lighting up that fire you know mm -hmm. um 
because I yeah, I couldn't like him. I'm like, dude, Danny Rays is, is fucking hyping me up. I got to like now every time I'm out in the street, I think about like it's right here for D way or like, you know, I'll think about my brother or whatever, just like finding a drive one way, you know, one way or another. And um, I think it's important for people to to accept people in their life, you know, like go, you know, if people come into your life and you see that they're, you know, hyping you up and like, you know, inspiring you and just like, or that you, you know, you look up to like, keep those thoughts and those people close, you know, because those are, right. you know, they're going to be very crucial in your art and your making, you know, and you're, um, yeah, definitely. You're out getting it while you're out trying to get it. All right. Hey, you know, uh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> like, so we're going to ask some questions of you guys from the chat. So, um, because we still need to get to your art and your acting. So, um, yeah, big I need, shot. I need either William or Kimberly to pop on and ask the questions. And why don't we spotlight them? And goodbye, Kevin. We're going to say goodbye to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, class. We'll be getting a session soon at uh, Stoner Park for sure. Yeah, Stoner definitely. Shout out. He'll Shout be, to the he'll be back, but you know, we're going to put on, let's see, who's going to ask the questions? Uh, I could ask the questions. Or there's William. Yeah. Um, so the first question that we have is uh, someone asked in the chat, do you think that skateboarding will remain something of a safe haven and second family for kids from broken homes? It already has. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I believe it already has. I believe that that's already been taken, like for me, but just from my experience alone, Skateboarding has saved me from a, 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 a life of crime in prison way before when I was a kid. This, this see, I, I started kind of late. Skateboarding saved me from a lot of mischief. And, and I, I think there's so many kids out there right now in the street that they, that's all they have is skateboarding. And, it, and it, now that there's so many skate parks, I think it's like, you know, you can invest your time into hanging out with the fellas and doing up something up to no good, or you could go and just fight with this skateboard on some concrete and just try to battle out some tricks yeah. because we all have a little fire in us and we all and 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 those that don't know how to express it there's your outlet right there and you see it on the internet now you see all these kids that are so good unsponsored but their fame is on the internet and they're getting somewhere with it and that's that little incentive to keep them going just enough to get like that fame and look my trick is on the internet now and it's such a good thing. Back then, you would eat and you would just do it for the certain crowd at the school. Like he said, we would be at schools. I think it's a great thing. I think it's like, man, that that that, that kept me out of a lot of trouble. Like, believe me, wanna... there, was lot, there was a lot more trouble to come out of this guy right here. But skateboarding saved me from so much. And I thank skateboarding every day, every all the time. And I wouldn't even be here if I didn't skateboard. I, there's so many things that like, if I just had the acting, the acting wouldn't even happen if it wasn't for skateboarding. A lot of things like the, the everything that I have today is a direct result from skateboarding. So it laid a foundation for you, Fabian, right? It really it's, 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 the root, it's the root of my, yeah, it's the, it's the, it's the root of my, my life, skateboarding, because I know where I come from and all that, but now, believe me, I grew up with, I have family and friends that didn't skate and they're from the same era and they went different paths and I'm able to come out and still like, I get, I get stuff like Adidas and Nike SBs and all kinds of stuff. You think that's from not being a skater? That's from being a skateboarder, you know? I still get it to this day. I still get skateboards. I'm about to do a skateboard with, with, with Oscar you know, like I'm about like, there's so many things because the skateboarding has got me jobs and acting. It's just, you know, the, 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 the accountability for skateboarding it for me has been everything. It's been everything. And let's talk about that. We're going to get, we're going to have a guest board for skate Libre skateboards, uh, which is my friend for Nance, uh, Ori Hale's, uh, skateboard brand here in Mexico city that we, he's had it for, for a couple of years, but we just, this past year really, I've pushed it out and um, and done more with it, and it's growing as we speak very, very fast. And we're gonna do a, a guest board with with Faves because when when he, he got out of prison the last time, I was like, "Yo, dude, I skate for this brand, Skate Libre," 
you know, now that you're free, I was like, yo, I think we should do a board, you know, like do something like you're free and everything, you know, I was like, it was just like, it just seems perfect, you know, perfect. Uh, and uh, skate you know, free. Yeah, skate free, you know, and it's, and it's like, it's crazy because it's why I'm even skating now, you know, because I just skating for just for me, you know, it's not even about like the the pressure game or anything like it's and that's what i had lost you know now it's like I'm, I'm i'm enjoying every process of like wanting to get better it's like all just like naturally just flowing out of me you know uh, but one thing i wanted to talk about the uh you know about william's question um it's uh i truly believe so and and one thing i want to give a shout out to to my brother max barrera which is he's my roommate here in mexico city and uh he's he's doing the uh, Max Barrera organization, which is going to rehabilitate uh, orphan orphan uh, kids and girls with with skateboarding and everything behind skateboarding. So with music, you know, art, teach them about filming, you know, like not just build skate parks here, but but build, a, uh, you know, uh, to really help them uh, give them tools, you know, give them the tools to to actually you know, uh, be creative and, and see, see what, what skateboarding is about. So it's, it's, uh, it's going to be very cool, especially, you know, I think Mexico really needs a lot of, a lot of support, especially now. Nice. Um, William, do you have a question or uh, from the chat? Uh, yeah. So this next question kind of goes out to both of you. So the two of you did talk about getting your first sponsors when you were starting out. Uh, the two of you did talk about, about it a little bit saying how y'all were consistently just going outside skating out in the streets day in day out but would you say that there came like additional factors to contributing towards you getting your first sponsors and sponsors in the future Fabian, you, want you want to go first i'm gonna go first easy fast it's just it all comes down to style too you know it's like doing everything your way you know like I can do the, the exact same trick that other hundred skaters do right like all at the same time, but we're all going to do it differently. So, you know, there's going to be uh, ways, you know, to, to stand out, you know, and it's just doing everything, you know, like as, you know, to try and make it look as good as possible with your style, you know, like I'm not going to go learn, like you said, a 360 flip, I don't know what trick that isn't going to feel good to me because I'm not going to make it look good. You know, I'd rather do a simpler trick on something really gnarly or whatever and just like, and make it look good. That's, you know, it's, you, you figure out, you know, your strongs and your, and your, uh, your weaknesses. And, 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 uh, and I just, I think it comes down to how you do things, not what you do, you know, it's just like how you do it and, and where you do it. Uh, that makes, that can play a big factor in, in, in getting sponsored or getting a contract or, you know, things like that. Fabian? Hey, look, it's just like this. It's simple. You know, you go out there now, you got it easy. You got that, you got that internet, you got the phones, you could film. You know, I, I remember going out there and like, we had to get someone who had a camera, a big ass camera to go. And we had to, he had to buy that camera because you can't steal a camera. As far as I never stole the camera, you know? And where are you going to find one? You got to go to the store. You had to go to like Best Buy or, or Sam Goodies and stuff to go get a camera. Crazy Gideon's downtown. So you had to get a camera. Like nowadays, you got this phone. You got all the opportunity. It's there in the streets. You got the skate parks everywhere. If you want to skate, you got friends that could film you. It's all about you applying yourself and just, and if he's right, you got to have a certain way of, there's a certain style to, to it, man. You can't just go out there and be this like stiff robot. You have to have some kind of finesse. You have to finesse it. It has to come and look natural. Just like in anything you do in acting, it's the same way. You have to just look natural. Don't be like, uh, 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 uh. you can't be like that. You can't be stiff. So whatever you do, do it good, do it wholeheartedly and commit to it. And if you don't learn it, you don't know your craft then you should learn your craft because you can't teach talent. Talent, it, it's either you have it or you don't. You can only mold it if you have it. You can mold it, but you cannot teach talent. And same in skateboarding. Not everybody's built for skateboarding. Not everybody's built for, for, for acting. You have to find what you're good at. Find your niche in life. And whatever your niche may be, you know, have fun with it. Have fun trying all these different things growing up. Like as a kid, I tried so many things. But I felt something with skateboarding. And I knew it came 
easy for me. It's like certain things that just felt good. It wasn't so easy to where like I was a naturally gifted dope ass skateboarder, but the things that I did, it felt good. And I put my heart into it and it showed. Now, same thing in anything you do in life, you can, you, you, you can try all these different things, but if you're good at something and you love what you do, then you're living the dream and you're getting paid for it. That's living the dream to me. I've lived the dream twice in life. God has blessed me to live the dream twice in life. And I've had crazy like ups and downs, roller coaster rides, man. I mean, I've been on the streets homeless. I've been addicted to drugs. I've, I've been out of my mind, like doing all these crazy things that landed me in prison, you know, from carjack, kidnap, robberies to, to like just holding up stores to people and then ending up in prison I was supposed to do like, I was supposed to do seven years. I ended up doing more than that. So, you know, it's, it's what you want to make of it on earth. Here on earth, you can have your, your, your heaven or you can have your hell. It's you're in charge of your own destiny. It's what you want. When you wake up in the morning, some people decide to like, hey man, today I'm going to go and I'm going to have a good day. I'm going to do this and do that and be, be very positive and, 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 and just build on their, on their lives like, and just make their lives good. Or you can go and just do some crummy ass shit and be a shitty person and just be in jail or be a, a menace to society and however you want to live. And then you get the results of that. It's what you make of it. Me personally, I've done that already. It didn't work. I didn't like it. It hurt. I, I don't like being by myself in prison and jail and have to wake up and look over my shoulder every morning. I don't like that life. I love waking up in my own apartment knowing that I have a car in the garage and just having money in the bank, good, solid people around me and people that really want to see me do good and do well. And most of all, it's me. I want to do good and do well. I want to, I want to, I want to see my kids like grow up and, and, and say like, man, my father was, he was a good person. You know, he took care of us. He did his best in life. He may have had some turbulence in the beginning, but he, he, he ended up being pretty good. And he did well and he tried his best. And that's all you could do in life is try your best. And for those right now, like we're living in a COVID life, like, you know, it's, it's like, it, you, may be in, you may be on lockdown, you may be on this lockdown that you call lockdown, but it ain't really a lockdown. I just got through doing four years of lockdown in Pelican Bay and that's lockdown, you know? So, you know, don't be, don't feel, don't be so hard on yourself. Don't be, don't beat yourself up. You still, it's, it's like, you got so much freedom and movement and action to, to be in your, if you just have to quarantine in your house, it's such a good thing. I, I had no choice, but to quarantine inside a cell an eight by 12 with, with nothing. And you go out for one hour a day and you come back and then you just, you know, you, you're, you're living a, a, a life of, of like solitary confinement, it's not good. It's like you, 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 you get a need to be around other people, but then you become so numb and, and like you, you become used to it that you just, it doesn't even bother you no more. And that's the scary part because you become used to that. And now you come out and back into society. Some people don't have that chance to come out into society. I was fortunate. Thank God I had a chance to come back out. And people in there were like, you know what, Fabian? Go out there and do well. Do good. Make us proud. Because a lot of them, they had these in there. They're sneaking these things. And I don't want to tell you where they're going and sneaking them in. But they're sneaking them in there, okay? And they got them. But let me tell you something. It's, it's, they're, they're watching me. And they're looking at me. And you know how I know? Because I still get calls. I still get calls like, man, you're doing good. You're doing great. They call me like, you know, I have made some friends in there, some really solid, good people. And they still call me, hey, man, I see you're doing really good. I try to give them a little bit of money here and there if I can, you know, just to keep them fed because I know it goes a long way. And, you know, I got that kind of blessing from a, a, from a few people, a few people that reached out to me as fans with the Cholos Try and the, and the skateboarding community because my Cholos Try videos blew up, you know? It was through skateboarding, how they recognized me, a lot of them. And they were like writing me while I was in prison. Hey man, like we didn't know. And then, but you, now you got this inmate locator thing and they could find you. So I had stacks of mail 
And yeah, we got haters. There's haters everywhere you go, especially in prison. So I was eating good. I was living good. I was getting mail. And I was, for being in a little small cell, I was doing the best I possibly can in there. And it was up here. It starts here. You have to start. It starts with a thought. You, you, I, I put it into the universe with my words. And then I put it into action with my heart. And ain't nobody going to do it but you. And people, you know, a lot of people feel like they're, they're really down and depressed and all this. And, you know, you have you, you may go through your emotions, but you really have no reason to be depressed because if, if it's only the quarantine and the COVID that you're worried about and, and being in here and you cannot go to school and you can only got, you only got to do it through Zoom and all these, all the our work and everything is through Zoom now, well, guess what? Adapt to it. Get, grab, your, grab your shit by the hand and just adapt to it, man. And just get over it because this is not the end of the world. You know? And there's people in there doing for 30 years. I know guys that have been sitting back there for 35, 40 years. And they have such a beautiful attitude, man. You would never even think, you know, but I don't know what they go through when they lay in bed at night. When I lay in bed at night, it was hard for me to sleep because I, I, I just, I, I had these crazy like anxiety and I, and, and, I, and I still get it every night and I'm not even making this up every night. And I know anyone who's done time can tell you that you come home and, and I lay in bed sometimes now, but I got the, now I got the privilege to lay in a soft, comfortable bed and with the remote control and watch TV and just watch TV and, and flip it around to a bunch of channels and I still can't sleep. And that's because of the, 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 the things that you've gone through all the, it's just a, it's a mind. It's just your mind, the way it plays on you, man. And um, PTSD, whatever you want to call it, but it's, that's just what it is. Now I'm working on myself. I still go to A. I still, even though I'm done today. Oh yeah, you guys, I got good news. Today I'm done with my classes for parole and I'm now no longer, I don't no longer have to do that. So, but I still choose for my own, for my own. Thank you, brother. For, for my, for my own, I still want to go and be a part of these AA and NA classes and have meetings to keep myself going. I will still do that for, I think for the rest of my life because it, it really truly helps me. And like talking about it is therapy for me. I never used to talk about my problems. I grew up in a family where we don't discuss, we never even sat at a table together and had dinner. We used to eat separately and just eat your food and come in at any hour you want. I, I, I just know that my life is now clear, sober for three years and still going. And um, no alcohol, no drugs, no smoking, nothing, not even a vape. I consider that drugs. So I'm, I'm just not doing it. You know, I, I, I don't want nothing. And uh, this is new for me, but I, I love it. And, I, and, you know, God is good, man. I, I, I just got to say, you know, keep on going. Don't give up. Just stay committed to doing good. You're feeling it, Faye. So we can't, I can't wait to see, like, all the projects that you're doing. Like, in, you know, straight, straight out, like, you know, you call you call me one time and you're like, hey, I got my check there right here. And I'm like, what the hell? And you're like, you know, he's all talking, to me, hey, I hear you're Mexican, you're in Mexico City. I'm like, damn, yeah. you know, it's like, dude, I, I feel like yeah. you still have so much like love and, and talent for, for the world and, and you know, to uplift people and and uh very excited to to for, for you and for everything that's uh yeah that you're doing, thank you, you know. Hey Oscar. Oscar, remember when I, when I, when I, when I, when you talked to me, right? He was like, hey, who's that? Who's that? Hey, let me talk to him. You know, he's, he's like, that's Danny Trejo, bro. Danny Trejo is like, he's like, oh, yeah. Like, yeah. I so, like, dude. Instantly right I was like, damn, shit. Like, you know, it was tight. It was super cool. And it's like, it's, it's good to see, like, you yeah. know, you feel so passionate and like really just, you know, doing the most that you can every single day. And I see that you did a lot of, you're doing charity stuff with them and yeah. you know like feeding people you know in need right now with 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 the whole covid thing you guys went out and, and you're doing you know wonderful things and i wish you know i was out there to to join you guys you know obviously um but i'm super excited you know uh to to see what you what you got going on in the next couple of years it's gonna be tight 
And speaking of which, we're going to do a video now, um, and then just we'll wrap it up with some last questions. Um, Mel, can you, so this is now talking about art and skating and uh, acting, which both of you gentlemen are passionate about. Yeah, we look like brothers. <laughs> I like that. I I, my hair grew up. Like, we look like the real Mayans, huh? Yeah. <laughs> so we, we will get you both the, the, the videos, you know, that Mel put together um, over the past uh, six weeks. So, um, yeah, I'm making the bald head now. You know, I know. Like, here's going back. Now that I saw the long hair video, I'm like, man, 
They might want to grow the hair back again, dude. You grow that Nirvana look again, huh? It's yeah, start. me too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to um, hair for so Don't worry. I have one last question for the two of you, and then I think we'll just do Q&A because it's past 630. Um, yeah. Fabian. Yes. Us, like, how does skating and um, acting, like, how, how do you, how would you explain to our audience uh, how they intertwine? around the art the artistic side of it and like you know what are your thoughts on how you know you're acting with um with skating well skateboarding and acting for me i look at it the same if i'm if and i take a for example an audition i'm gonna go into this audition right i'm gonna get the sides the, you know i'm gonna study before i walk in front of those casting directors that means I'm gonna practice my trick before I go and if I'm gonna do a kickflip crooked grind on that rail, I'm gonna get my crooked grinds on flat on a on a on a on a nice little planner on a block, and then I'm gonna do my kickflips. I'm not just gonna go straight to that handle. So you gotta get your fun your foundation and fundamentals first. So for me, it's I look at it like conquering that trick. It's an audition. I'm conquering another trick, and I and I feel it too. And I feel that same nervousness, you know? And but forgive me for saying this, but you get that nervous caca sometimes. You know what I'm saying? Everybody gets it. Don't lie. Hey, whatever, whoever wants to say they don't get it, you're lying. You're lying. Everybody gets it. Everybody, yeah. Hey, don't go like this. You get it too. So everybody. I try, I try really hard not to do auditions. Yeah, hey, look, I'm sorry, but I'm a little bit more, more, more real with my words. Now, look, everybody gets nervous. You might get a little nervous stomach, a little butt. You want to call it butterflies? I call it something else. But anyway, so you get that, you get that nervousness, and it's good because what that does, that pushes me because I could either take it as nervousness or I could take it as adrenaline right. to get me pumped up, right. to go in there and knock that audition out and just be me because who I can I can't be Oscar and I can't be Kevin. And I just gotta go in there and be myself. I gotta go in there and be myself and give it to him in my version, my way, and just do it and then own it. And just and you know, but yet, you know, you gotta you gotta read the context and you gotta read the like and dissect the the script and you and you you go into it and you just go in there and, and be in the moment. And in skateboarding, if you don't be in the moment, if you're not in the moment, you're not going to commit to that trick and you're going to eat shit. So basically, it's it's the same thing. Applying those same mindset, the same mindset and skills into that and then knocking it out. I don't know what you think, but I don't know what you got a different way of saying it, Oscar. Yeah. So what is your art? How do you combine your art with skating and why do you do art? Um, well, yeah, when when I wasn't skating from 2015 to 2017. I wasn't skating so much. I had, I was going crazy. You know, I could hardly sleep. And I was like, I went to New York um, and was staying with my friend, Harif Guzman and Muska was there too. And I just like spending time at the studio, you know, and, like I was a skater, at, you know, fully in my head. I was like, I'm a pro skater. I'm like, I don't paint, you know, whatever. Like, you know, I didn't even know what, what an oil stick was, you know, <laughs> like, like how to use it or what. So I just like, was just getting inspired by them and when i got back to to la i just asked musk and he's like hey what do i buy the the that tela you know the, the canvas you know like what 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 where do i go get on <laughs> just went and up and just like did this it was it i love painting because it was uh it's the same you know how you said i treated the same as skateboarding as like you know i had to pick and choose my my tricks you know it's like i needed to pick and choose my my mediums and canvases and stuff like that which was uh you know at first it was really hard to do because you know as a skater you don't want to be a poser you don't want to be like a, a copycat that's just doing everybody else's tricks so you you really got to be authentic with what feels good to you so you know for the for the first couple of months i was like yeah like my whole just mission was just to find my own style you know like find what i thought was cool and i paint what I think it's cool to me, you know, I, uh, I paint for myself, you know, and then everybody else's opinion, you know, it is what it is. But when I'm painting, it's like, you know, I, I dig into what I think is cool and I make it look, you know, I, I make it look from my being real to myself, you know, and that's the same thing from like with skating. I'm only going to, you know, if I'm out filming or whatever, someone's like, Hey, tr you know, do this trick. I'm like, you know, nah, dude, I'm going to do this, you know, but make sure you film it right. <laughs> you know, so 
I just, it's just, you know, it's skateboarding has a, you know, there's so many lessons from skateboarding that you can really apply to any type of, uh, creative, you know, um, uh, industry, you know, with, with photography, with everything, you know, it's just like taking those same lessons that skateboarding has taught you and apply them to real life, you know, like, you know, we have to try a hundred times at a time to learn a trick or to get a clip, you know? So it's like, it's the same way. If you can do that, like in, in your new, you know, adventure, like don't be scared to fail, you know, like, cause that's what we're doing while we're not, while we're not landing a trick, we're failing, but we're trying to figure out how not to fail, you know, like to, to figure it out. So it just, just applying that, you know, apply it to, to, you know, I had to do so many art pieces that are like, you know, whack, like, you know, I was like, wow, what am I doing? Like, you know, you have to learn, you have to learn your, you know, your crap, you know, what, uh, whatever it is that you're doing and, and just keep trying, you know, keep trying and, and, uh, you know, apply those, you know, the same characteristics, you know, if you're a skater, you know, do you, I'm sure you've learned that already. You've learned to never, to not give up, you know, maybe you're not going to do it that one day or maybe in the next week, you know, there's been times it takes months at a time to get something done, you know? So it's the same thing. Apply those same men mentality, uh, that's, you know, apply that same mentality to, to whatever it is that you're doing. And I, I'm, I guarantee you, you're going to break through just the same way, you know, you broke through and did learn your ollie or learn your kickflip. It's like, you know, at some point, you know, everybody told you no at that job, you know, or whatever you're trying to get this job at marketing or whatever, you know, just don't let them stop you, you know, like, okay, well, I'm going to knock at the next door, you know, but I'm going to apply some changes, you know, maybe I'm going to like with a kick for you and put your foot a little bit different, you know, maybe at your next interview, you might say something different, you know, you might go in it with a different presentation, you know, but just don't give up. Uh, never give up, never give up. Ah, yeah, exactly. All right, so uh, Kevin has um, Jess. Is Jess is Jess going around to spotlight Kevin? Bring him down here. Yeah, of course. Uh, this is our last question, and then we'll take a couple Q and A, and we'll call it a night. But thank you guys. This has been so fun. Hey guys. Right, yeah. Oh yeah. So uh, I think just like a good ending question would to be to uh, talk about like so. Let's say the Olympics really. Sorry, sorry, sorry to catch you off. I see, see Emerald up there. He's the he's who who presented you to me, right, Jenna? He's the he's the kid that uh that showed you, you know, the me doing the clip. Shout out Emerald. He's a beast. He's shredded. <laughs> Just want to get you know do that little special uh, yeah. shout out to the homie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, like I was saying, let's say the wait. Say what? Nothing. You're on, Kevin. Ask oh, okay, okay. So, so like. What? No, hold on. Oh, I'm gonna, Kevin. So you texted me something. Where are you headed with this? Are you asking the question you just texted me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So let, let's 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 have a let's let yeah go. Just yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, where? What do you see uh, with skateboarding in the future? Like now it's in the Olympics. Let's say people really start to make like a decent living compared to like a pro skater before. Wasn't making much of a living. Like, what do you see in the future now? Just like it's on the Olympic level now. So, you know, what do you, what do you see in the future then? For, for, well, for Oscar, right? Uh, you want to go ahead? You want to go ahead, Fabian? Yeah, Fabian, you want to I go? think that's for you, dog. When I see it's just like, obviously the level of skating is just going to get off the charts. Like, I mean, I, I you know, I'm, I'm good, you know, but I'm not, a beast like how a lot of these young you know there's a lot of yeah you a beast dude. you a beast you're insane i'm like i'm just breaking through that how how good i was in like 2015 like before i stopped skating really like where before i saw like really pushing myself i'm just breaking through that barrier again of like all right i'm learning all these new tricks now that that i wanted to do years ago so like i'm not gonna lie yeah i I'm better than what I was, but I'm not anywhere near where I where I sh should be. I feel like or where you what want I to be. It's where you want to be. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah. There's some crazy tricks that come to mind that I'm like, I I know I could do this. Like the other day, I was yeah. trying to learn this trick I've never seen anyone do. You know, but um, like it's it yeah. So the level of skating is gonna be really gnarly. Um, mm -hmm. I think I think I well what I hope it's where which 
is that you don't you know we don't lose the roots of skate of street yeah. skating and even like pool skating and just like you know the real essence of skating which i think it's crazy but the pandemic really helped like regrow a lot of those roots because there's so many skaters that didn't have time you know we were traveling you know from brazil to peru to china like you know we didn't really have that much time to street skate anymore so now that everyone's at home they're like wait we're at home we don't have to skate these contests or contracts yeah. like we don't have to train really that much and the whole city shut down like and you know yeah, we didn't, yeah. oh my god so now it's like it re grew that you know that uh that desire to go out and street skate which i i feel like it's gonna you know there's gonna be a, a huge punch to that which i you know i'm already seeing it um and i think that's what we're gonna what's expected a bunch of gnarly skating a bunch of little groms of course that are gonna be like you know, like uh, robots at the skate park that hopefully we, like training them, facilities yeah and hopefully take them to the streets but you know um yeah, I, I, I think it's a good thing for, you know, um, where, where where skateboarding is heading for sure. Awesome. All right, Fabian, um, what's, your, what's in your future? Um, my future, let me see. Oh, I'm going to I'm going to do some movies, man. I'm going to I'm going to be skating more. And I got some. Uh, I can't talk about it. I can't say <laughs> that. It's it's a contract. Baby. Well, it's just, a, I can't, I can't speak on it right now, but I got a couple of pretty good things coming up later this year. And um, right now I'm just working on the craft, man. I'm, I'm in the studio kind of like just honing my craft and, and, and getting my chops on acting, you know, because you can't play the tough guy all the time and be like, Hey, you know, cause I got the tough guy. I mean, the, the, the tough guy's there. I'm doing the opposite of tough guy. I've been working on that, you know? And um, other than that, other than one that, thing I, one thing I wanted to say, sorry, Faye, to cut you off, is like if anybody meets Fabian in the streets, like you know, he looks, he is a tough guy. I don't, don't care. Oh, yeah, that's definitely. Like, he's also <laughs> such a, like, dude, he's got such a good heart and is, uh, you know, uh, always out to help, you know, the, the next person in front of the next thing. So, uh, you know, just uh, don't be afraid to say what's up to him, you know, he's a super nice guy. Uh, so that's cool know. that, that you're, you're doing all that. Do some other roles. Sorry. Thank you, man. Thank you for that. Thank you. I will be the soft cholo in every movie from now on. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I like that. You know, I, I I um I do. Yeah, you you I believe in range. You know, showing range and stuff because uh, you know it's it's just too easy to play the the easy. That's too easy. That's easy stuff for me. So I um I've I've been trying to push on my board more. Uh, do a little bit of uh hanging out and just giving back and, and like, uh, I want to do more of these, these on, on zoom. I would like to do them in person. If I could, like, I want to go to juvenile halls. I want to go to jails, prisons. I want to go to, uh, um, rehabs. I would like to go to and speak at skate parks, high schools, colleges, wherever it be that that's needed. I would love to do that. So anybody out there that's willing to, you know, um, if you think that I fit the bill for anything like that, I would love to be put into those kind of situations where I can go and do presentations like this. I would love that because that's where I, what I really want to do. Um, but with another shirt on, not this shirt, of course, I would be putting on a shirt, <laughs> you know, so looking more presentable with the tie and stuff. So, um, this yeah. is the college, so, you know, there's, you know, there's a bunch of skaters there, you know, we, you know, yeah. Oh yeah. I could, I mean, the skate Harvard. world, this is a this is the Santa Monica outfit. Yeah. The yeah. This is, the, this is the beach right here, you guys. Come on. <laughs> you know? But um I, I I love I love doing this. I love helping people. Like I've I've I feel like I wish I would have I, I wish someone would have talked to me when I was younger. Mm. And maybe, you know, who's to say? But I, I think I had everyone has to go through their own path in life. And me, I don't regret anything I've done, although it's been a lot of bad and hell situations, but you know, I'm here and there's a reason why I'm here. And there's a reason why we're all here and put together on, on, in this zoom meeting. And I'm, I'm so glad and happy for everyone that's on here. And thank you for coming out and, and joining in. And, um, I know I got a lot of people that, that look at me and they probably, you know, they, they think one thing when they see me, like you said, but they, um, 
once you get to know me, it's a different story. You know, you, you, you'll go, you'll walk away thinking, well, that guy wasn't so bad after all, you know, but looks ain't everything. So you can't yeah. judge. And keep a look out for Fabian. He might be in the next TMZ, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, letting, 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 being let go by the cops because they recognize him for, for his, for his uh, YouTube channel. It's happened before. It's happened before. If you look on my page, the cops recognize me and they seen that I was in the Cholos try and they let me go. The female lady. <laughs> I got, a, got <laughs> pulled over by a lady cop. You know, so, so we, we I know Fabian and Oscar both have a hard um, 7 p.m. Um, or 9 p.m. in Mexico City. So do we have a couple more questions? Um, are you uh, Oscar Contreras? I see you on top of my screen. I'm going since you raised your hand and we're bold. Let's have you ask your question. Here it comes. Hey, guys. Um, awesome talk. Really cool. Uh, hear the stories and. Man, I, I, I grew up in Mexico City. I mean, I've been skating since the 90s. I remember uh, Fabian's a top pro for Menace, you know, back in the day uh, with all the, all the dudes at Lockwood. Yeah. Uh, I live in LA now. Um, I, I grew up skating with Max Barrera uh, back in the day. Like, we're all skates on Agus. I live with him. He's right here. <laughs> okay. He, yeah, there was not that many people in the, in the oh, skate scene okay. back then, but. No, um, no, he, yeah, he man. Hang him in. What's your I'll, I'll let him know you said what up. I know Max too. <laughs> yeah. So so anyway, I was I mean, man, I was wondering. So since you you've been uh you've been in LA, I mean you grew up in LA and now you live in Mexico City. I mean, I grew up in Mexico City and then I came to the US and man, I know it's a really it's it's different worlds, right? Maybe, maybe not so much now, but back then, you know, back in the 90s, it was, it was a very different world. So what are the differences like between the skate scene, like say in LA and in Mexico city, obviously LA is the world mecca of skateboarding, but I mean, is there any differences that you feel now? I'd be interested because I've been away for a while. So, and I go back now back to visit my parents and man, there's like Fabian says, there's skate parks that we would only dream of back then. I mean, we had basketball courts with like, we were jumping over boxes, you know, basketball courts that didn't even have proper ground, you know? especially in the area where I lived. Um, I lived by where, what is now Santa Fe. Man, that oh, area was nice. not even, that's gentrified now. That's like, it's crazy. like, that looks like China now over there, man. Like it's modern. <laughs> when I was there. Story about that. That So it, Santa Fe uh, is, it used to be a huge dumping ground for, for Mexico yes, sir. City. Yes, sir. It to, now it's like, like you said, China, like you, you feel like you're in China, dude. It's like amazing beautiful like buildings like you could you could you could tell that every everyone that was building the each building was like competing on like how cool they're gonna make their building because it's like you know the yes, architecture sir. it's and amazing I, man i go i go now i visit my parents over there and uh i go down there and it's all my my personal skate park down there the, that whole downtown area you know it's super changed like that didn't exist when i was living over there um yeah. but yeah i just wanted to find out what you think of the the skate scene over there yeah. versus LA, you know, what's, what's the, what's your take on that? I love this question because the truth is, it's like, I've been having thoughts about this and it, it's, uh, it's, it, the, the, it's growing a lot here. You know, there's over 20 million people just in Mexico city alone. Mm -hmm. So it's a huge city, you know, um, and skateboarding is, uh, quickly becoming one of the, you know, like a, a huge sport here, obviously for many reasons, but, um, I feel like Mexico City is still, you know, it's obviously behind in, in how they see skateboarding. So it's like if the early 2000s in LA, it's happening here, you know? So there's a lot of like hunger and these young new talent that's just like, you know, uh, that haven't got like an opportunity yet, let's say, or, you know, you don't, you don't feel that same energy as LA where it's like, you know, I don't know, it's, it's, it's already it's happened you know like la's already happened like it's you know uh, a lot has come from there so it's like i'm very like blessed that the life has brought me here at this time right now because i'm in i'm actually in the front end of like helping is you know helping shape the, the the skating scene here and helping it in, in any way i possibly can but it's i feel such a uh, such a realness to the industry here you know, just how it was back in the day in LA. Like there's, it's a smaller community in, in the sense of, uh, and everybody's just like exploring still, you know, like just hungry and, and, and also the spots are like way rougher, you know? So 
you we're building a lot of like really tough skaters here that are like like i you know it's made it's made me a tougher skater too which is like you know i was so used to skating perfect spots in la coming here you got like gnarly cracks and holes and just like rough ground you know which is like i actually love that you know i love that it's like i have to work harder you know like i take a slam and i'm like bleeding i'm like shit like you know it's it's it, it like it had to, i had to get roughened up you know i was i had it i was having it too easy you know like i grew up in south central and i made it out of there and you know it was like i was just coasting by and it was like i was you know i, I coming here it was like uh you know a wake-up call just like you know get down and dirty go get out get out in the streets and you know like like rough streets you know i'm like skating spots that i'm like i would have never thought to you know i would I, w- I was a skater in la that would complain about spots like like i would tell ty all the time yo you gotta bondo this whole thing right here you know and that that culture doesn't exist here yet like i'm just barely starting to fix a couple spots but that culture doesn't exist here you know it's like every spot you skate it how it is you know like just how it is and it's like you know, uh, I love, I love, I love it here, man. It's like, you know, it's really helped me fall in love with skateboarding again. Like the real street, you know, like, you know, the, the gutter of skating. It's tight. That's cool. That's good to hear. The opposite happened to me. I came here and uh, now I'm spoiled. You know, I'm used to like nice concrete and, you know, nice ground and all that. But yeah, I grew up skating, like, like you said, you know, just, uh, really rough streets and just whatever obstacle was in front of you didn't even question it you know um yeah. you hey know, hit me just, up next time you come down to mexico city and visit your family i'll get uh we'll get a session going with max barrera he's i've been i've been uh having to pull him by the year to come on and skate recently <laughs> but, but we'll get him out on a sesh <laughs> yeah for tight. sure i mean yeah if i i don't know if he remembers me but like if we i start I start, start talking about san agus and the old days he'll he'll remember yeah, like yeah. all the all the posse from back then you know Ooh, man. pleasure man well, pleasure and, and thank you for that that uh, question that was that's a good one all right cool Kimberly, thanks Kimberly is going to ask the last question to Fabian and then we'll sign off and what a pleasure this has been let's do it yeah so we had someone okay. in the chat ask for 500, um Fabian here we go just kidding <laughs> oh Kimberly all right look at Kimberly I like the little curls <laughs> thanks Nice. <laughs> so, uh, so we had someone on chat actually ask, did you go pro for Z? I was a Z boy. I was a Z boy. I started skating in the Z boy era, like Dogtown Z boy, Jimmy Z's, Paul Peralta. Um, uh, there was like uh, Santa Cruz, uh, Josoy Rocket, Hammerhead and all that. Like it was like Elva. There wasn't like all these millions of skateboard companies like there is today. So yes, I was a Z boy. I went up to Venice Beach and introduced myself and let them know that I'm not from here, but I want to get on your team. And they tried me. They said, let's go skate. And they brought their best out. It was Butch Sturbins, Dino Campo. Um, uh, uh, Butch Sturbins, Dino Campo, George Watanabe and Pat Noho, all these dudes are OGs from Z. They're all like Venice Beach, like Dickies, no shirt, bandana, like baseball cap with the thing up like this, you know, in your baseball cap, Venice, Venice suicidals. Like they were all like, you know, like that. And here I am, I blend right in because I had all that, but I'm just not from the beach. I'm from down here in Echo Park, downtown LA. So when I went, I took, I used to take the bus every weekend to go down there and I, I, I called them up and they, and actually I didn't, it was my girlfriend at the time who would become my baby mama. So she did that. She did that for me. And like, she made it happen. So with that, she was like, she was like, I'm going to call them and you go down there. I'm like, man, I don't want to call them. I'm like, I'm just going to go out there and skate and bust on them. But like, she was like, no, let's call them and set up a thing so you can go and skate. And I went to mad circle. It was called green circle. No mad circle, a skate shop or Green Circle in Venice Beach, I forgot. But I ran into some dude and he was like, hey, his name was uh, George Wilson. George Wilson is the one who got me started. George Wilson had, he believed in me. A kid that he couldn't even go to my house to pick me up. Check this out, Kimberly. He had to go on, I live over here in near Normandy in the middle between Normandy and Vermont in LA in between Vermont and Normandy on third street, there's a street called Kenmore. I lived on Kenmore. If you ride past my street more than, more than one time, they shoot at you. 
That's how it was back then. So he had to wait for me at the Vons on, on 3rd and Vermont when it was Safeway. He used to meet me right there. And then I used to go and skate and meet him there. And um, he's like, dude, I can't go by your house. I went by your house. Look, at, we didn't have a phone. That's how broke we were. We didn't have no phone. I lived in a brick building. It was called a brownstone. So I had to go and skate down there to go meet this dude. And then he would take me away. Those are my first times getting away from the hood skateboarding with George Wilson. He believed in me. He said, man, and I was just a little dirty. I'm talking, when I say dirty, I mean holes in my socks, toes sticking out like the Three Stooges. I had all that going on. And, um, and, 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 and uh, same pants for a long time, shirt, wide neck. Like it was like down to here, like a wide neck shirt, you know? And I wasn't trying to be on no fashion shit. It was just the way my shirt was. It was like, I, I was raw, I was ghetto. And I had my hair all messed up and then just skate. And that's all I did was skate, 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 skate. And we got, I, I got, those are back in the day when you do a video part in like two days. You, you film most of your tricks in like one day back then. Because you only had a, some footage. You only had a couple, you know, like. You uh, had some just, sick ass. Look, back in those days where you, you would skate, Oscar, you skate and you would get like at least 10 tricks in one day. And damn, that, that, that's I, they, good, bro, they, bro, they took me to, to Powell Skate Zone. They, them, sta them same people took me to Powell Skate Zone, Kimberly, and I just killed that spot. I was on probation, like trial. They were like, hey, man, we're going to get you on the team. We're going to see how you act and skate, how you skate. By the, by the time the two days were over, they were like, dude, we want you on the team. You could go pro for us. And I'm like, dude, I can't go pro. I don't feel like going pro. Z wanted to turn me pro, but I was like, no, I don't want to turn pro because I don't feel like I deserve to be pro because my friends would make fun of me. My friends that were better than me would be like, what? You're turning pro. These dudes were good. Like Gabriel and and like and and all these dudes were they were dope man they were bad and they were like I, I felt like I had to be like them if I wanted to go pro. I looked up to Gabriel Rodriguez man Gabriel's my boy. I think about him every night. When I was in Pelican Bay, he was telling me he's sick. He died from cancer last year, and he was only a, 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 the same age as me. He died at 46, and then he he passed away from cancer. And um, I can't believe it, man. Like. He, 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 I talked to him on the phone and I had my friend take him and his hospital bed in general hospital, take him food and, and, and get him like my friend, Janet, she took care of everything for me, man. Janet's like a saint. She's an angel. She took care of everything for me. She visited him at the hospital, took him food on his dying bed and then went to his funeral for me and laid flowers there and laid my picture at his funeral, at his wake. And then I got out and went to go see him. Gabriel's like, he's LA. And when they say LA boys, that there's a documentary called LA boys. That's Gabriel Rodriguez right there. And that's how I got started. Cause the LA boy, the original LA boys was Gabriel Rodriguez, Guy Mariano, Rudy Johnson, Paulo Diaz. That's them right there. The Bones Brigade. That's how really? I got started. Really? That's how I got started. They were they they were the they were my brothers who got started and then they put they they opened up the doors for me to get put on. We opened up the doors later on the line for Oscar to get put on. You know that's how it works. We were that's always showing stuff, and uh, Paulo Diaz was the first pro I ever even saw skateboarding. You know, so like just getting the respect from you know even like Fabian and them is like it's what you want. You know, in any in any industry, you know, you have like the dudes that just like. Especially from where you're from, you know, like these, that's, you gotta always show respect to who's done it in LA, especially not like LA that the, the world like knows yeah. at LA. We're talking about like the streets, do you know, especially yeah, for skating. Because skateboarding started here. This is where skateboarding started in Venice Beach, but LA skateboarding is where it's where it, it turned, it took a new turn, it took a new twist. Oscar, you know this too. Started in Venice Beach, but LA made it turn or it turned it around into something different, man. And we changed the game. And and Gabriel, Rudy, Guy, and Paulo are the like, they're like the ones who who kicked it off for us. They're the main ones who started it. And and me, I grew up with these guys. It was only a matter of time before it was my turn, but everybody has their time to shine in the band. We just, everyone gets a turn. And, and I hung out in that circle, but it was just wasn't my time yet. So after them came me. Me, Joey, Joey Suriel, Billy Valdez, and, and 
and we all came up in that in, in that way like that, you know. And then we got Stephen. We got, we went out to New York. Got Stephen Callis. We went up. We went up to Frisco, and and we went. We got Lee Lee Smith. Then we went up to Jersey and got little Javier Nunez. And then we and then and it just grew, man. Eric Pupecki, you know, Kane Gale, and just started, it grew into a big thing. We even got P Rod. We started P Rod. Paul Rodriguez. He was on our company. As a little boy, he was a little kid at the time, man, killing it. And then that was his stepping stone to grow and to be who he is. Because everywhere you got to start somewhere. And yes, I was a Z boy. I'm proud of being a Z boy. I love being a Z boy. You know, I want to thank you, Faves, and, and everybody in LA that always show me love. You know, all those good names that you, that you mentioned, like Paulo and you know Rudy and Gabriel and on. You know, it, it means all my that brothers. Man. Yeah. To me. Like getting the respect from Muska, you know, and like the real, you know, Paulo Diaz, like you know, like. That's that's what means you know the world to me, and I appreciate all the love that you guys always showed me and helped create me. You know, like you guys gave me yeah. the opportunity to flourish and like gave me that respect, so that the the whole industry would like show me love too. You know, like it was tight. I really appreciate hey, that. Shiloh, Great House, Kareem Campbell. I could go on and on, bro. I could go on and on, but like you know, these dudes, they're like they're like great people, man. How we met and like because of. Paul, Paul Takahashi and like all these guys that it took a lot of people it didn't just take one us just skateboarding and we did it ourselves. It's it takes a lot of people to get like, you know, it takes a lot of people to get to where you're at. And just like in acting, it takes a lot of people to get to where I'm at. And like, I'm, I'm, I'm so blessed to be next to Danny Trejo. And now I got a management by Bobby D. Bobby D is like, to be with Bobby D, I think it's a great thing because my manager manages Snoop Dogg, Ice Cube, um, Warren G, OT Genesis, the the um, the uh, 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 the the what them dudes name the the um them you know um it's the first of the uh, month. What they name? Migos. No man, the first of the month, homie. Um, uh, a Bone Thugs in Harmony. Yeah. Yeah. So so yeah. Hey. No, because the little noises you made, I was like, man, it's Migos, they make no sense. Now, see, you got, see, you did, but the Migos, see, I'm with Don Thug, bro. Yeah. See, that's, that's the difference. See, that's the new generation. I like that. They see that, that just goes to show you where we at. You see? See, you see what I'm saying? But, but look, you, it takes a village though, man. And like, I'm, I'm so happy to be in this circle. And then now with Jenna and the Santa Monica, Santa Monica College, like, that's just a new door for me. That's a new door. I, I came from Pelican Bay to, to college. Like I was, I was in college up there though. I was in college. Up, I was college of the Redwoods. It, it gave me six months off. I was doing college of the Redwoods up in, up in the pen. I was taking a class called HFM. Like um, I was doing um, healthcare facility maintenance. I was learning stuff all the time. I was in ARC. Thank you, Scott Budnick, because I was in ARC. Scott Budnick opened the doors to like this program that helps get people off uh, out of prison and get them reformed and into working in society into becoming a a a a, 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 a citizen that like a, a to to be productive and to get away from crime and and to stop the recidivism of of all this of of how you think it's how you think it's the revolving door in prison and jail once you get a prison number my CDC number man you can't shake it it's so hard so I'm glad it takes a lot of people that's why I love meeting people like like Melon and Kimberly and Kevin and everybody who's on this man, like everyone, yeah, every guys are beautiful people. So, so like, so Fabian, I'm, I'm gonna cut you off because I know you could go for another hour. We could keep going. Let's do another one. Let's go. Uh, but you, you're the one who has an appointment at eight o'clock. You told me so. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm gonna fly on the freeway, so it's so okay. I do want to thank everyone. You're gonna see me on the news right now. That's to get a haircut. Here. I heard. Um, um, and this amazing <laughs> team that you see on this screen. Um, I could not have done this as you saw without them. And uh, for all my students that are here, I kind of saw you coming through the chat when you're facilitating, you don't have time to respond to chats. Um, and once again, be bold. This all would not have happened if Emerald had not sent me the P3 pic of Oscar. So social yeah. media, it was on Instagram, you know, Oscar and I have been DMing for months and uh, you just never know. So be bold and and, Jenna, see, and see what can happen. Yes, Fabian. Yes. Can these people follow me on Instagram? Fabian yes. Alamar official. We, we, put it, we put it in the chat. I follow back. I'm not conceited. I follow That's back. Product placement. That's product. Yeah, that sure is. All right. I'm gonna <laughs> should I go get my Lockwood shirts? 
Yeah. <laughs> Oscar's brother, Sergio, is an amazing tattoo artist. I'm going to do a product placement here for Oscar's brother. Sergio um, Meza, Oscar, where does he work? Purified drinking water. Yeah. So good. Uh, he works at a tattoo shop in uh, on Melrose. Uh, his Instagram is Meza Tattoo. Um, and mine is Oscar, at Oscar Meza. But you can DM me. I can send you the tattoo store that he, the tattoo shop that, that he runs and stuff. Yeah. Uh, He's, yeah. he's getting really good yeah. at tattooing. Uh, really great. He's, so, he's yeah. the nicest man. If you're going to follow me, hey, let me just let you know this. If you're going to follow me, I follow back, but you got to let me know who you are and where you met me at because I don't just follow any, like, it's kind of crazy. Oh, just wow. <laughs> so let me know that you know me from this right here. You heard my story, and then I'll follow you back. All okay? right. All right. Soon you ain't going to be able to get, you ain't even going to be able to, to find Fabian. He's, uh, he's going to be big time. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Pretty soon you're gonna have to. Pretty soon you're gonna have to like us. Uh, you're gonna have to schedule me in here in advance. meeting to to just talk to him on a DM. <laughs> yeah, hey, DMs off the hook, bro. DMs off the hook. Don't say. Don't. Let's not talk. Let's not. Go. That's not the subject. A face, face, but they're going off the hook because of the other videos. This, but but yeah. we won't get into those. No those surprise. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And let's not talk about that. Either. Yeah. Okay. Hey, Chonchis, I love you, brother. I love you, man. Thank you. Thank you. Good night, Jenna, thank you. Thank you. Good, good night, you guys. Good night. Good night. Bye. God bless. Uh, thank you, Jenna. Thank you. Bye. Bye, Jessica. Bye. Bye, Bye Kimberly. Bye, Bye. 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 All right. Good night. Bye, Melon. Bye, Jessica. Bye, Paul. Good Thank night, you, Kevin. Man. Good night, Jenna. Good night, Fabian. Right, good night, Paul. Can we do that? Can we do the like? Can we do that? I feel like we're on the right. Brady Bunch. Just go all the way down. Good night, Emerald. Good night, Emerald. Good night, Prince. Good night, Prince. Good night. Prince is my yeah. All right. Good night, Kevin. Yeah. Thank you. All right. I got you. Bye, Felicia. Bye, Edmingus.